Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty excited today. I'm going to be walking you through creating your own web service. The reason why I think you need to know how to create a web service or how to consume a web service is because when you're dealing with games, there's a lot of times when you're going to need to either consume an API for one of the social integrations that you have to do or for many different things that you need to consume that are available on the web. So many times I find myself needing a web service because I need to store information about my players. I might need to store a level online. I might need to store any other criteria or information that I need for my games. So for these videos, I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step for creating a web service from the beginning to the very end. So by the end of the video, I want you to basically be able to use what I'm, what I'm teaching you as a boilerplate for your own web services. So let's actually start with creating a Visual Studio project. And then on the next video, we'll create a wrapper where we can call into our own web services from Unity. So let's get to it. All right, guys. So the first thing that I want you to do is download Visual Studio Community Edition. I'm using the Mac version, but you're welcome to use the Windows version as well. So then click on New Project and then ASP.NET Core Web API because we're going to be creating a RESTful HTTP web service. And then select the latest version of the target framework. And I'm going to call this Unity 3D RESTful service. And then click on Create. So what I want to do for this video is I want to create what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a web service to store player information. So right click on the project add and let's create a new folder. And I'm going to call it contracts. And I'm going to create a player class because that's what we're going to use to basically serialize and deserialize when we're making an HTTP call. So I'm going to call this player. And I'm going to delete the constructor. And I'm going to call the, I'm going to add an attribute called JSON object. And I'm going to tell the system that this is a serializable class. I'm going to bring in NewnSoft. And let's actually add a few properties. So we're going to need an ID. And this is going to have a getter and a setter. I'm also going to need full name. And it's going to have a getter and a setter. And I'm going to copy full name. It's going to be float. And it's going to be score. So basically what's going to happen is we're telling the system that this is going to be a JSON object. And also that we're going to be serializing the JSON object to a string. So the next thing that I want to do is, if you notice in here, we already have kind of like a boiler boilerplate for making RESTful web service calls. So I want to rename everything here and I'm going to rename it to players controller. And I'm going to say OK. And what's going to happen is you're going to be able to call this by using your host in a port number that gets assigned when we launch the solution. And then also the controller name in this case is going to be players. So instead of saying APIs forward slash values, you're going to be able to say APIs for forward slash players. We can actually make the changes here so that we know how we can make calls to these different methods. So we're going to have a get to basically get a list of all the players, a get by ID to get a player by ID, a post to create a new player, a put to update an existing player, and a delete to delete a player. So what I'm going to do here is because we're not going to have a persistent layer, meaning that we're not going to have a database to back this off. And you're welcome to use a database, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to stay with players that are stored in memory. So I'm going to create a static list of players, and I'm going to bring in our contracts, players, and a new list of players. And I'm going to create a new player called, actually, it's going to be. And I don't need uh, And this is going to be player number one. And it's going to be named Michael Jordan. And we're going to 
give it a score of 1000, which is fine. And I'm going to duplicate this three times. So we should end up with three players. And I'm going to be one, two, three. This is going to be Steve Jobs. Let's say that Steve Jobs knows how to play this game better. And we're going to just say this is John Doe. And John Doe only has 500 on the score. Perfect. And that's perfect. OK. So then the next thing that I want to do is right now if we do a call to API players, we're just basically going to get a list of strings. So I want to change this to be a JSON result. And it's still going to be an enumerable, but it's going to be an enumerable of players. And actually, the return is going to be JSON result. And I'll show you why. And I'm basically going to return all the players. And we can do the same, something similar here, except that we want to get a player by ID. So in this scenario, we want to pretend that we're searching the database. And I'm going to use single. And I'm going to use a lambda. So I want to return the player whose ID has that ID. And I'm going to return a JSON object of the actual variable. And this is going to be also JSON result. And that should be it's perfect. And then in this case, what we're saying here, so what I'm going to do on the post, I want to return a new list. And instead of saying from body string, I actually want to deserialize what's in the body to a player. And this is going to be actually the new player. So I'm going to designate the variable as new player for simplicity and so that we know what we're doing. And the way that this is going to work, I was going to say, OK, players, we're going to add our new player. And there's a lot of validation that we can add to this. For simplicity purposes, we're just going to add the players to the database that is in memory. And then we got to return the new list of players. So I'm also going to return JSON with our new list. So remember that this is the create. And then let's say that we want to do an update. So on the update, I want to basically read a flow. And this is going to be the new score. So I want. I want people you know, that, that are using Unity to pass in an ID and to pass the new score. So this is how we can get the score from the body of the put HTTP request. And then right now, we don't know what player we're updating. So I'm just going to copy line 43. And I'm going to paste it on line 49, 59. And now that we have that information, I'm going to say, and we have the instance of player with that ID, I'm going to update the the score to the new score. And I'm just going to return the new, the player, the up, updated player. And we need to return a JSON result as well. And the last one that we have is basically a delete. And I'm going to copy line 59 and paste it on line 68. This is going to get the ID of the player and the player instance that we want to delete from the database. So I'm going to say players, and then remove, and we're going to say player. OK, so perfect. And I'm going to remove all the using statements that we're not using. I like to keep things clean. OK, perfect. So now let's actually test this. And I'm going to test it by using Postman. So let's hit play just to make sure everything builds. And let's just give it a few seconds. And OK, perfect. So if we in the browser, if we type in players, we should get a list of players, which is perfect. So I'm actually going to go into Postman. And let's go back to I get. And I'm just going to say, and looks like the new port. Let's go back to Chrome. And copy that URL that we have in Chrome to Postman. And I'm just going to do a get. 
and we should see a result, a JSON result with all of our players. We also implement it, so you could technically say, okay, now I want player ID number three, and you can hit send, and that should give you player ID number three. The other one that we implemented was, let's say that we want to delete ID number three from the database, so we can do a delete with the ID. If we go down here, actually make this a little smaller so you can see that we're passing the ID as the argument we're passing the ID and if I hit send we get a status of OK which means that it got deleted and we're not returning anything so let's say that we want to see all the players again and not a delete to I get we should only see two players in the database because because we deleted player number three so let's say that we want to add player number five or let's say player number three again. So we can go and say, we can do a pose, we can go into the body, and basically that contract needs to match the contract that we created. So we need to have an ID, we also need to have a full name, and we need to have a score. So if we go back to players, and I'm actually gonna put a breakpoint here so that you can see what's happening. And I'm actually going to insert player number three. Let's give it a different name so that we know. Let's say that this is Delmer. And my score is 7,000. And everything looks fine. And I'm going to hit next and send. So now if we look at the player, it's basically did a, a serialization from a JSON string into an object, and you can see that it's actually has, has done all the mapping for you. And if we go in and add a player, and I, I can actually hover over players, and we have three players. The last player is the player that we just created last, and I can hit play. If we go back to Postman, we could see basically our new list. Same thing if we wanted to do a put, you can do a put and it'll actually update the update the score. So that's basically what I wanted to show you in this video. Just to do a recap, we created a new player contract that we're gonna use basically to store a player into our database. And the database that we created in this in these scenarios is basically just a database in memory. We also modify the values controller to be a player controller and we have an inline play basically an inline list of players we also implemented a get http method a get http method by id basically a post so you can create a new player and we can update a player and we can delete a player so on the next video what i'm going to show you is how to make calls to this web service by using unity we're gonna be creating a wrapper that is gonna allow us to nicely call into all these methods. Also a wrapper that we can use in our future games. Let's say that you want to use a web service in your, in your game, so you need to implement a web service to store your own information. You can use what I show you to basically create a web service to do that. And also, if you have any questions in regards to what I just showed you, let me know through the comments. And again, don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you, guys.